Like, you, can you imagine having a relationship with your family again? At this point, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, like, pretty much disowned me. Last time I talked to my mom, she called me a slut and a whore. And... I don't escort anymore. I did as a teenager when I was, like, underage. But I've had NDA sent to me. Mm-hmm. I was, like, also a drug addict at the time. Like, I couldn't do it sober. So have you ever met with anyone who's, like, verified rapper, celebrity type? Or... Um, I think a little too much has been said. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast hosted by me, Sloan. And today we are joined by two big porn stars, Brittany Cade and Angelica Good. I am so excited to have you guys here. How are you doing? So good. Amazing. Thank you so much for, yeah, having, thank us. You for having us. Uh, I feel like you're just in a really interesting point in your lives and your careers. And a lot of people have misconceptions when it comes to porn and you know sugar daddies. And I feel like today it'd be great to take a deep dive into what your lives are like. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your work and porn. So it seems like kind of everyone does porn nowadays, like with OnlyFans, <laughs> right? It's like anyone could be an OnlyFans model, but yeah. um, you two specifically work in studio porn as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, everyone has an OF, different. but yeah. So talk a little bit about um, like the difference, like OnlyFans, like people can make content on their own. It could be studio as well, but um, really what is studio porn? Studio porn is more so where you're not making money off the content. They just pay you like a day rate yeah, to show up. The day. Um, and they own the content, so you can't put it on your no. OnlyFans. Oh, and you don't okay. get to choose, you know, who you're filming with or the set or the script or anything like that. Like your wardrobe. Um, like yeah. it's oh, all really? So up they're to matching them. too. Okay. Yeah. So. They they come up with the concept. They'll send you the script, and then you can be like, "Yes, I want to shoot this." Obviously, mm. you can turn down. It all comes down to consent. But like. Um, so if you like get the concept, you get the idea and you're like, oh, this is awesome. But then you see the guy or girl and you're like, oh, no, you can deny well, then or for us, because we're transgender, I feel like we are more they're more likely to drop a male performer because they can just yeah. get another one. Any, the guys, uh-huh. it's you know? literally like if one can't come that day, they have another one that they can just call. But yeah, with the girls, it's especially trans girls. It's a little more like specific, I guess. It's yeah. A smaller pool. And if you were to like, let's say you start getting a bunch of offers and then you say no, then like are, are they going to kind of like take note of that, too? And like they're not going to like hire you again if you say no to everyone. But I do think it is sort of like that. For mm-hmm. me, I try to be very. Um, easy to work with. Me too. I say yes to everything, yes. everyone. Um, <laughs> Same. Well, you've been so successful so far Thank too. You like you, so you recently won an award. It's called the um, AVN Best Trans Newcomer That's 2023. Right. So That's AVN right. is um, kind of like a, I guess a, it's ag- agency or an organization called Adult Video News. It's kind of a news company. It's like um, the biggest. It's pretty much the biggest, like, award show for the adult community. Um, They do, like, a convention right before Mm -hmm. the award show. And it's definitely more mainstream Mm -hmm. than a lot of the smaller ones. I believe they just started um, including trans categories, though. Yeah. Because there's a whole specific trans award show as well called the TEAs. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think this was the first year ABN or? Um, No. No? It was the second year they've had that category. Uh They've had... Before it was just best trans performer of the they year. They just had the one. Yeah, just the yeah, one. They're growing. Mm, it's good. But, so um, now there's a newcomer, and I see. Okay, so yeah, there's like. And yeah. how many other like girls were in that uh, category with you? Ooh, I want to say a good. I think ten others were nominated. Oh, so you beat them through, like okay, <laughs> rising awesome. to the top. Yeah, how did it go. feel like doing the red carpet and everything too? Was it fun? I felt famous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like being um, asked questions. They do like interviews and stuff, and. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah, I saw you on my TikTok when I was healing. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't make it. I wanted to be there to support her, but I had um, prior engagement, so it didn't yeah. work out. <laughs> but um, it was awesome. Like it's literally, it felt like the Grammys of porn. Yeah, much. yeah, Definitely. that's sweet. So, um, and you know, 
being trans in porn is obviously different than like classic porn. Like like you just said, this like category is relatively new. It's like yeah. you're finally getting recognized in this um industry. So let's talk a little bit about how like porn is different as a trans woman because um obviously people are at different points of their transition. There's different things that people are into. For so sure. you guys may have heard like the phrase like top or bottom, like you know, in the gay world or trans every world, honestly. Yeah. I mean, usually like the woman's the bottom top and, or like, you know, in depends on what you're into so when you do porn like is there a specific like do you like to get fucked do you like to fuck like what is your (laughs) preference so i would say in my personal life um i'm a bottom for sure like that's like with your like boyfriends and intimacy or you know when the camera's not rolling Uh uh-huh but on i'm a switch on camera though yeah when the camera's rolling, I'll do anything. I'll do double badge. I'll do, like, <laughs> we just did double badge this <laughs> I week. Did. Wait, Together. so like when you mean double badge, like you're hooking up with a cis woman? Yeah, yeah. Same like I, you know, in my real life, I would only want a man. But yeah. like for porn, like it's it's less about oh, like this is gonna be so hot. It's literally like playing basketball with somebody. Like yeah. you know, you want to kind of have the variety. Guys love seeing a girl get. Um, penetrated by like a trans woman because yeah. it's like they don't have to look at a man they get to see like all this like femininity but mm-hmm. they still get the you know the, the action fuck. i guess yeah. yeah and it does go back to like being easy to work with like yeah exactly. studios especially if you're not doing the scenes with the cis girls i feel like you're not gonna get as work you're not gonna get as noticed yeah mm-hmm. definitely. If you say yes to everything you're gonna blow up a lot. Yeah. Better. So there's some trans girls that now, like think. won't touch a cis woman, like that you that you know in the industry, or is everyone pretty fluid? I think most of the porn porn girls, the bigger names, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's why they're the bigger girls, names, like, right? You yeah. know, a lot of girls won't even do stuff with other trans girls. Meanwhile, like that is my best selling content. Like when there's, oh, that's why sure. we film together. I film with her more than anybody else, yeah, and I think same. vice versa. <laughs> like. We're like the trans cock destroyers, kind of. <laughs> yeah. <And> so <laughs> we love them. They're cool. Like. You are obviously like best friends. You're super close. It, and there's nothing like some people maybe think it's like weird to like sexually hook up with like their best friend. But like I guess in your <laughs> mind, it's not like necessarily like a super intimate thing, yeah, right? No, no, no. I no. guess it's more transactional. And we're like talk about like <laughs> it's more so for me like acting. Like yeah. an alter ego comes on and it's like <laughs> okay, I'm a lesbian now. Let the me. sex is the <laughs> smallest part of it for me. Why I love my job. It's like I love like doing different look like yesterday we did body painting we still have like a still have these (laughs) fake tattoos down here we got like tatted up and it's like coming up with the concept and like yeah you're having sex but it's like you're also an actress yeah getting to dress up too like cosplay and stuff (laughs) for sure so like i feel like so you know some people struggle to like top in general or to fuck and Brittany has shared with me before that there's a way that some people will like enhance their abilities because like i mean Obviously, being trans women, like, you, like, are beautiful. Like, it takes a lot to get to this point. You have to take hormones. You have to do – and we'll get into that. But, like, to even get off, there's methods to, like, inject your penis with, like – what do you inject yourself? Trimax. It's called Trimax. Mm -hmm. Um, And – And how much do you have to do of it? Like, a whole syringe or, like – Not even. It's, like, the smallest little It just takes a little bit. Honestly, it doesn't work for me. Um, You didn't have a great reaction when you did it, right? No, I'm very lucky where I'm able to get hard, like, and still produce you know yeah my baby gravy or whatever you want to call it <laughs> yeah but, but a lot of girls do take viagra i do take viagra, viagra. Yeah. if i'm <laughs> filming with um girls like well i think a lot of I people just viagra. in porn in general just do yeah like, i feel like it you need a little well, enhancing i <laughs> <Something>. mean <laughs> i feel like a lot of the performers that we work with okay so a lot of the street male performers will not shoot with the trans girls. Yeah. So they're always putting us with the gay performers. Uh, gay guys don't they don't want us. Oh, That's a huge you know? misconception to people who don't know trans girls. Like they think it's gay guys who want us, but you know you uh-huh. I would identify as gay and yeah, you no, want I'm a not man. Like, you don't want to boobs. women at all. Like, yeah, yeah. it's so, not just about what's down there. It's like so the whole painting, you know. When we're shooting with them too and you want the they want like you to be hard for yeah. the scene and everything. <laughs> So they'll inject Trimax Mm -hmm. and it's like. Ah, so is that how you kind of got put onto it? Like seeing other people using it in the industry and you're like, oh, what's this? And then like, 
you kind of get gets passed around like mm-hmm. candy. It, on yeah, set. honestly. <laughs> um, How big is the needle? Like, does it? Like, I just like oh, it's it an, makes me tingle thinking about like injecting, needle. like insulin needle. It's yeah. very thin, okay. small. Well, I'm a baby. Last time I had her inject me, she screamed. I screamed and I hit her and I said, "I'm never doing this again. Like, never. I will rather just like take a hundred mils of Viagra and like be seeing." Yeah, blurry. Like, <laughs> yeah. do you know if um any of those things have like effects? Like, I mean, do you yeah. take it like often, like almost every day, or like I guess every day you're working, right? Well, I have done it back to back to back, and I feel like that really fucks with my body. Mm-hmm. In what way? Is like your heart, or like like just down there? Down there. Yeah, I think. Well, I'm not sure. does it just get it like working and it can't stop? Like, um, there is definitely like after the scene, you still kind of have a boner, and you're just kind of waiting yeah. for it to go away. Yeah, because it does last an hour sometimes too. Wow. But mm-hmm. um, the worst part is at least for me because. I'm not a lesbian. Like, I'm not attracted to yeah. a pussy at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have to do it for those scenes. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed even in my personal life, like, it can be harder for me to, like, maintain an erection, even yeah. though I do want to, like, be intimate with my partner. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's just, like, um, I feel like, I mean, every job, every, like, life choice has some psychological, you know, co- like, repercussions. Yes, and I think maybe this ultimately it probably messes with your and your sense of intimacy and also even like having those bodily things you can't control i feel Mm -hmm. like because i guess when you're like topping and stuff you're kind of like mentally not like in that zone but your body's in it right yeah and you know taking trimex over time too like i i worked with a male performer who he was doing like gay for pay for years right Mm -hmm. and so he was taking it every time he was fucking and now he needs it even even just like with his, you know, girlfriend or wife or something your, like that. Yeah. Your dick forever. Yeah, like you won't be able to get hard. Mm-hmm. Like I've kind of been more lax on it. Like I don't inject as much yeah, as I used I've to because that. I noticed the side effects. It's were, like a yeah, last resort, I think, for that's how it should be treated. Like it gets abused, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll see guys in one shoot if they were shooting the day before, their body's tired, they'll shoot twice in a shoot. Yeah. And uh it's like not it just looks so uncomfortable to me like because and then they have this like it's like a semi sometimes yeah the, it's just it gets so hard exhausted. in certain like yeah spots, oh, it's spots a, of the it's dick like wow it's, it's a not like erection the entire yeah, yeah that's... it can like bend and stuff it's oh. like forcing your body <laughs> yeah it's not like and does your heart go kind of up too because it's like a blood rush or no it doesn't I know really it's mess viagra. with that. Viagra, yeah, if you but sure not like, it with drinking girl. too, which <laughs> we can never do on a professional set. But sometimes, yeah. you know, when you're filming, like you're drinking in Viagra and alcohol, it's like you're seeing a blue line on everything. It's, yeah, it's a lot <laughs> and like shaking and stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> being in the porn industry, there are there the challenges and sometimes there's a blur, like a blurry line and it could get scary. Sure. And um, I'm sure you've had like instances where like you felt like you were being pushed too far or necessarily uh, you know, you didn't agree to what what happened or what was going to happen with the work. Are there any like stories that come to mind where you're just kind of like that was a big learning lesson, like going through that and realizing like, oh, they kind of like screwed me over. There have been a couple of times where like I show up to set and the studios don't do a background check on the other person's mm-hmm. test. And it isn't until right before we're about to shoot the scene to where it's like, oh, I was tested a month ago. And the director's like, if that's okay with you, like go uh, ahead. And which it's not two it week should, minimum. Yeah, two honestly. week minimum. It's maximum or two weeks. Yeah, what it should be. It's yeah. really unprofessional. Mm-hmm. Um, but and have you caught like I guess in the? I mean, I'm sure working in this field, like you're bound to, but you have probably due to like poor screening, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's realistically it's pretty common, but how I do feel like we are still more cleaner than people that are just hooking up like on apps yeah, yeah. they aren't even tested you don't even mm-hmm. know like what i'll they shut have. shit down real quick if i don't see the paperwork really like, yeah you have to you have to protect yourself like it's not worth the the, the risk the risk or i mean the have content. you heard of like, like horror stories like like people getting hiv or things like that or like i i don't know anybody mm-hmm. well i do i know a couple like male performers who were doing it you know in the early 2000s, yeah. who they did get HIV from doing, you know, um, gay porn. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I'm saying you get it specifically. Yeah, it's just you, like the screening measures. Sex is going to be yeah. an easier way to get it than. So, you know, some of the old school, like, 
gay porn stars that uh-huh. I know. Um, I'm I try to be careful, you know, take prep. It's like yeah. very good to educate yeah. yourself. Um, make sure you're really knowing who you're filming with and seeing their paperwork mm-hmm. yourself, not just being told. Yeah, you like can't what about rely like, on studios to do no, it for you? Really? Like, and I was gonna ask, like, when it comes to these studios, like, have you ever like not been paid or like just stuff like that? Uh, my, like, yeah, I've been like delayed months for my wow. payments for like big. Big, big Anyone company. we want to shout out? Like, we want to call out? <laughs> My digital playground? Um, yeah, but they did pay me. But. Yeah. but they took forever, right? I've been lucky. Forever. I've always got it. I film, uh, so I haven't filmed any studio porn in Canada, um, or sorry, in United States. I'm Canadian. Uh-huh. And um, for me to shoot here, I, I don't want to do things the wrong way and then kind of fuck myself out of being able to work here again. So right now I'm starting to look into the possibility of getting like a work permit because, mm. you know, I was supposed to do a scene today, but... I talked to the director and he was saying like, oh yeah, no, I don't think this. It's just too complicated. Well, with that. there's a chance I could lose my ability to like come back to America. Yeah. You have to be very honest yeah. about everything, about where the money is coming from and stuff. So, um, because we get also, we don't get to keep all our money. We're getting taxed. I know. Yeah, I'm we sure you're getting, I mean, I get taxed it. like a bitch. Yeah. So I'm sure you are it's experiencing the same, It's like 1099 know. and things like that. For sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. um, before we move on to a little bit about your lives, I, you mentioned like a phrase earlier, like shallow fucking or something along those lines. Yeah. Can you explain like oh. what that is and like why that could be like problematic, I guess sometimes so, or. Um, I guess the explain story. Explain what we it were, is and yeah. then I'll tell the story. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, shallow fucking would be when, you know, let's say you, you're bottoming and you're still tight, so you kind of want them to just start by... Just um, the tip. Just kind of getting you <laughs> like started. Ease just into the tip. it. Yeah. Ease into yeah. it, yeah. It looks better on camera, too. When it does. You can't see, like, the full penetration when the whole dick is in there and they're mm-hmm. just, like, pounding you. you it's you so know? uncomfortable mm-hmm. topping somebody with a camera because you have to, like, show your uh, whole body, their whole body. Yeah. You have to cheat the, it to the you camera. You have to show it, yeah. But um, there have been times where I have been on set with companies that, you know, shoot that also shoot for browsers, but they have like a sister website that's for the trans community. And Mm -hmm. I was on set and I asked the guy, I mean, and also on set, like you have a sound person, Mm -hmm. you have like a director, you have like a bunch of people in the room. There's the assistant, there's the person that's like taking care of everybody. Yeah, and I had asked the performer, can you please shallow fuck me? And he's like, yeah, okay. And I know they got it on their fucking audio, but yeah. he grabs me by the hips and like, like, oh, and you're like not ready me. for that. And it's kind of like at that point, I'm just like, oh, fuck it. Like, let's just get this scene yeah. over with. Yeah. But it was like a little fucked up that yeah. like everyone in the room heard me say that. Yeah. And, and you agree to that. It's like, it. Obviously, it's not like rape, but it's like giving like rape energy. Well, you did it's not disrespectful consent to that. kind of to not listen because consent is the whole way through. Like you know, that's the most important part of this. Like every mm-hmm. time the camera turns back on, like I'm always like, okay, I'm going to touch you now. Like, you know, and yeah. there's also, there's can be problems like with people like not wanting to respect off camera that like, okay, the camera's off. Don't mm. like touch me. Yeah. Like or don't, yeah. I don't like you. <laughs> like, I, yeah. This it's is not work. like that. You locked know? in, clocked mm-hmm. out. So I think a lot of people like have misconceptions about porn stars because they assume they come from like super broken back like the backgrounds guy. and like dysfunctional families yeah. and things like that. So like let's talk a little bit about like your family life. So are they fam- like aware of what you're doing for work? My family knows what I'm doing for work. Um and they are not comfortable with it. Like I've honestly lost contact with pretty much everyone in my family. The only person I talk to is my grandmother. Really? Um, yeah, they like pretty much disowned me. Last time I talked to my mom, she called me a slut and a whore. And- oh, and how long ago, what, like is this kind of like a newer thing or like within the last five years? Like, um, Well, I just, this is like my second year in porn, mm. but um, we broke off contact last you know, October, yeah. Yeah. For me, um, I'm definitely one of the lucky ones. My family is very supportive. So they, we come, I'm very different than my family. Like Mm. all my siblings work in the same private Montessori school. Like they um, all live in the same place. I live in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Um, But like what it comes down to is they know I'm happy. My parents know I'm happy. Do they know exactly what you're doing? Like, are they kind of aware? My little sister, she's the most, she's the one I would really talk to I'll be like yeah I did this on site yesterday with my mom it's very much like oh I have a shoot in this place I'm going here oh I'm going here to film some content um so she's still aware and like yeah but we don't talk I've never physically said to my mom like it's porn I'm getting fucked on camera but like I think 
she's, Do you think she's like found stuff online too? Um, Has your I family? Don't fans think, have literally, yeah. because I've done news stories when I was like 17 with the Daily Mail uh, about my transition. My mom was in that, like other mm. people that were associated. And I don't have a porn name. So they were kind of easy to look up and they have sent them like my porn and shit. That's so yeah. fucked up. Why would you do that to someone? It's like so So rude. do you think that also made it like the relationship with your family right now? Is it a little, probably like even more sour because of people who have like intervened yeah. and try to like go like, aha, like you're, you know, don't, you don't know what your daughter's up to or like trying to taunt your family with your work? Definitely put a strain on the relationship for yeah. sure. Um, and do you feel like hurt? I guess I'm like, I'm sure you're really hurt by like the fact that they can't like. It is hurtful because like I do wish that they would support me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love my job. It's not something that I'm forced to do. It's not something that I like I feel like I have to do to yeah. like transition or yeah. like ha- have a living. But um, I really love it. And I don't see myself doing anything else. And the fact that they're so unsupportive. is Yeah pretty sad (laughs) do you think like one day they'll come around like i mean even like 10 years from now like you can you imagine having a relationship with your family again at this point no Mm -hmm. i just feel so far removed from them i think Mm -hmm. a little too much has been said oh it's been like hurtful fighting things like that yeah that's tragic malicious because also at some point like yeah maybe your parents could be uncomfortable but at the same time like you are family and like wouldn't they have this like you know, deep feeling to just make sure, you know, their daughter's okay in the world. Like <laughs> you would think so. I haven't talked to my mom. Like I said, since October, yeah. my dad, I haven't talked to him since I was probably like, shit, maybe 17. Wow. So would you say like prior to your transition, like, did you have a decent family dynamic or was it like somewhat dysfunctional? Like were your parents, <laughs> to- your parents, I'm guessing aren't together, right? Yeah, no, my mom had me when she was 16. Mm, um, wow. And, you know, she was a stripper. She was like a drug addict. Like there is like a stereotype where like, oh, if you're in porn, you must have had like a hard childhood. And it's true for me, but I feel like for Angelica, I honestly, like I have had like my family, like, so when I came out as trans, I was working as a hairstylist Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was only in my second year. It takes time to like build a clientele. And how old were you when you uh, first came out when I came out as trans? I feel like I knew since I was little, but you know, society kind of tells you, no, like you're a boy and I at first I just thought I was, oh, well, maybe I'm just gay and feminine. And, yeah. But, you know, anyways, when I was 20, um, I was working at a salon and I called my mom and I was like, pick me up from work today. She was like, that's weird. Okay, I guess I'll drive you home from work. And uh-huh. it was my mom and my dad. And I told them, like, you guys, I'm trans. Like, I want to save for surgeries. I never thought I'd be making the money I am now. So mm-hmm. the plan was to go home and, you know, live with them Um and save money and, and they, they were, were supportive. immediately supportive like yeah. i'm i feel like the luckiest girl in the world most of my friends don't have that relationship but i feel like a big part of being trans or you know in the lgbt community in general is very much chosen family mm-hmm. and like i feel like that's why i give britney like yeah i'm like i'm your mom now bitch <laughs> like, yeah like sisterhood for sure like Definitely. that's the most important part of of it and when did you like i guess realize you were trans or start your transition I realized I was transgender probably around, I showed symptoms around For five sure. years old, yeah. but mm-hmm. I transitioned I at 13. 13. So 13 yeah. like, and um, how old are both of you? I'm 23. 23. I'm 23. Okay. So that's really early on. So pretty much like over 10 years now you've been out yeah. as trans. So when did you start your like transition? Um, I started my transition at 13. I did um, hormone replacement therapy. Um, so your mom was kind of accepting then, right? Because she helped you do this? or She was like, if this is something that you really want to do, then you're going to have to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. And I, I was the one that found my doctors. I got on hormones. She signed it off, which I'm thankful for. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of ironic that she was so comfortable with that, but doing porn is like what broke the camel's yeah, back. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I was, like I said, I was 20 when I started and I think, I think we all know when we're little kids, but like, like I never wanted boy toys. I would Mm -hmm. wish to the stars every night, pray to God that I'd wake up a girl. Really? But I just think when you're a little kid, you don't have the words to describe, especially not back then. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I feel like everything happens for a reason and I got to live. I don't regret waiting till I was 20 because I feel like. 
it took until then for me to really, really understand like, wow, I can't see myself ever being a, being a little cute twink was yeah. fine. But like, I was like, wow, being like a man one day, like a big man, like, you know, eventually I would have had to, not that it would have to, but it w- the nails and the makeup and the like, yeah. little gay boy vibe wouldn't be so cute anymore. And mm-hmm. I was thinking like, I feel I that femininity was inside of me and like, it really, that's what it came down to to me. Like, how do I want to be seen by the world the way I want to dress? Like, mm-hmm. and yeah. So do you feel like, like, at, like, obviously transitioning, it really put you both at peace, right? It helped yeah, you yeah, feel Yeah, for sure. I feel like it was when I finally saw myself for the first time. Same. It gave me like a new lease on life. Like I was... I was literally like depressed every day before transitioning. I was like a cutter. I would like cut up my body. Oh no, like like, on your arms and legs and stuff? Yeah, I was like suicidal. Do you still have like scars that you can see or? A little, the spray tan covers it up. (laughs) I remember being um, during lockdown and COVID, this is kind of when, so I was doing a lot of drag. I started doing drag in clubs in Canada when I was 18 and Mm -hmm. I would travel around like the Atlantic provinces and do all sorts of shows and that kind of gave me my outlet. But then COVID hit, everything was canceled and Ah. I missed it so much. And I remember just standing in the mirror for hours every day during lockdown, just staring at myself and being like, why, what is wrong with me? Like I'm fit, like I have a nice body, I'm cute. Like I was a cute boy, I'll be honest, I'd fuck me. But (laughs) it was just something didn't, I was like, something is wrong. And I was always obsessed with like, you know, girls like with the big butts and boobs and the mm-hmm. like the Barbie girls of the world. And but it wasn't in a sexual way. But I my phone instead of following hot guys, I was following all these hot girls. And I feel like it's because I just, that's just what I wanted to be. Like yeah, I saw that I saw myself in that. I think so. Do you so nowadays like there's so much trans hate. So many people trying to like rewrite you know the narrative on what it means to be trans and how people <laughs> yeah, regret well, it yeah. and things like this. Yeah. Um, do you like? Obviously, that's not your experience. I think everyone has, like, different experiences. But do you kind of, like, look at that and you call, like, bullshit? Because you've never had any, like, thoughts of regret, have you? No. Me? No. I would never detransition. No. I'm. And I know a lot of people have, like, feelings about, especially trans children. Yeah. That transition so young. I do feel like I am the rare case where I actually. It was appropriate. Yeah. But you went through the proper – you did the steps. I think nowadays a lot of the the steps are skipped and they go like, oh, like you think you might be trans? Here's hormones. Were you like and, evaluated when you were 13? Like did you go to a psychologist yeah. like multiple times and they were like before you could even start hormones and stuff Not like that, a or? psychologist, but I did have to see a therapist. I did therapy too, group therapy. a couple mm-hmm. months before I even got on hormones. Yeah. Now they, they're giving it out like candy. Candy. Yeah. And that's really? the problem, especially when we look – so estrogen is a lot less strong of a hormone than testosterone. Mm-hmm. It's not going to change your voice. It's – you know, if if we got off estrogen for long enough, things would start to probably revert. Um, Testosterone, however, some are some irreversible. We, like, yeah, we like, can never have kids. I'll we're sterilized. Yeah, but, well, you were sure. so young too. I feel like that has a like a lot of impact as well. Definitely so in know, her like, case, because I guess like more you were so than mine. almost like when you were in puberty or right around the time you would have hit like puberty is when mm-hmm. you started, right? Yeah. So I did. It stunts your growth. So I do feel like that's why I'm pretty so short. tiny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't really grow face facial hair so um those type of things did work out in my benefit i honestly if i could have done it younger i would have mm-hmm. but i understand how people are more reserved yeah because i do think it's more rare than people think like it's hard to put like um put an age on it because i feel like it's one of those things that should really be taken case by case and that's why yeah. i'm such a a supporter of going through the correct steps. You know, uh-huh. even me, I, I had to do therapy. Um, I did group therapy. Yeah, It was the easiest. I knew <laughs> it was right for me. So I was like, let's just get this over with. But if I'm being honest, like the therapy was kind of, by the time I got to it, like it was so, he was like, oh, I'm not here to tell you if you're, if you're trans or not. Mm-hmm. But I think some people do need that because there are people who aren't sure. Yeah. And then if you're just like saying basically, oh, we'll get through these six sessions and then you'll get your hormones. Like, I think it should be taken so much more seriously because these mm-hmm. are, like I was saying, testosterone, like young girls will be maybe confused. I think they're just emo, but nowadays it's yeah. the new emo. Like, yeah. and they'll get on testosterone at 14, you know, it, they'll and get a voice a like a name. man yeah. and they'll grow a beard. And then, you know, they get to be 18 or 19 and they, they regret it. And yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that's every single case and I'm not, 
saying I'm strictly 100% against having teens transition but I think it should be taken a lot more seriously Mm -hmm. and be treated like you know start do for a year don't do hormones and live as a boy you know not everybody can take hormones that's not what makes you who you are you know like and those are just like bad like bad name or bad stories for the trans community who's trying to and it makes people take us so much less like a joke Yeah. yeah yeah and with people you know I'm not a hater on anybody but a lot of the new age of it and like the way people are talking Mm -hmm. and some of the people who are in the mainstream media they give us a bad name and not only yeah and not only are they kind of like making up things and trying to change the narrative like they're kind of not an accurate representation of what real trans women go through go through you know Mm -hmm. we're lucky to love our jobs but my friends our friends when they were our age were street walking to that was the only way they could afford their transitions and they would be kicked out like it's gotten a lot better but if we don't keep like if people are constantly putting a bad name to things and like you know just saying anything and kind of acting a fool um it's it's doing harm. To, yeah, it's like you just know, stepping back. I want the future so. of trans kids to have it easier than us, not harder. Yeah, and I think for that to be done, we sh- it should be you know treated like a real medical process, mm-hmm. not like oh give it a try. It's not or about some, trying like, it. It's about like, knowing and doing. Or, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, the transition process. So, Brittany. I want you to go through, and then we'll go to yeah. Angelica, but like the surgeries and work that you've had done okay. that you feel comfortable like sharing. So <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, obviously like your boobies. <laughs> yes, I've had um, two boob jobs. Mm-hmm. That was, um, I think, yeah, the first surgery that I had done. How old were you during the first one? Um, 18. Okay. So, but I've also- Did you kind of like grow like boobs from the hormones? Uh, I had like very small little A cups and I would wear like, two bras yeah. and like sh- stuff some like tube <laughs> some socks, socks in up there. in it yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the idiotic bit of cleavage i could get but mm-hmm. um i've also had veneers i've had a lip lift i've had cheeks filled full of juvederm <laughs> uh-huh. um my lips done as well and uh botox brow lift i done like a liquid rhinoplasty before i've had my master in botox mm-hmm. Um, I love a needle. I love injections. Yeah. So well, you look silicone. good. You don't look like overdone either, which is nice. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Especially if you have, like cheek filler that don't can tell easily her that. like go back for more. <laughs> that can easily like add a lot, like doing a lot of cheek and stuff. But like you look yeah. good. We've got such a small like face and like Thank you. frame too. So uh, you recently went through yeah. like a bunch of surgeries. So I'll so. give the little list uh-huh. of the things I've had. So the first thing obvi- I did was lip filler. That's been. I've had it done a good yeah. couple times. Um, I had my boobs done. Literally, like I'm a microwave tranny, we call it. Um, <sighs> a microwave doll, we'll say. Uh-huh. Um, so <laughs> I got my boobs done like a week before starting hormones. I did expanders. So oh. when they, they were put in, they were only 130 cc's. And then I literally just kept going back. I have a valve here and here. And they, Oh, you still do? I still okay. do. I'm going to get my whole implant replaced and they'll take the valve out with it. I could just get that removed, but um, I'm going to get them replaced with something... Um, a little bigger probably yeah because the bag is like full yeah right? my bag is overfilled they i had them actually a little more filled than this and it was right before i got my nose done and i was like you have to take a little bit out they were <laughs> like just because of the implant it was is a smaller bag like it just didn't look good and I, it's not worth too the hard size. and like round yeah it was terrifying you know? i almost i was like wow i ruined myself but thankfully he fixed it but so yeah i've had my boobs Expanders done. There's 750 cc's now. There was a process getting that, but um, I've had a rhinoplasty in Turkey. Um, I've had um, like injections we in my bum and hips. Yeah, so yeah. Done together. And I do want to talk quickly about the silicone. Yeah, so yeah. you have silicone injections after. in your body. Yeah, because your face, you just had a. I just had that done. <laughs> yeah. Which one do you want to talk about? Let's first? talk about your face actually. Okay. Yeah, we'll get into that first. So um, I re- just in January, I had facial feminization surgery done in. Um, Texas. So Mm -hmm. they cut me ear to ear, peeled me back. They removed my brow bone plate, put it in a little dish, (laughs) shaped it, reset my nasal pocket, reattached it with screws, did um, orbital bossing. Um, Then they did a slight brow lift and they lowered my hairline. Um, And then they did a lip lift. So they removed the skin here. She has that done as well. And then Uh they shaved me down here as well. And I looked like a monster at first. How was recovery? 
It was honestly probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. It was a big wake up call. Surgery is no joke. And, yeah. you know, you it's, it's so mainstream now. But this one was, you know, for a good month, I was like convinced I ruined my career and ruined my face because I was so swollen. Thankfully, uh -huh. I'm so happy now. I couldn't be happier. And I can say my face, I'm not cutting open again yeah, until I need a facelift when I'm old. But um, it was hard. I, honestly, I'm a champ. I had no pain. But it was honestly the depression afterwards and mm. um i'm still completely numb on my forehead and yeah. i get like a ghost itch but it's only been three months that will get better um but the healing will it takes up to a year to see yeah your final, to really final like result. settle yeah down. it was the same for my nose mm -hmm. but i'd say now i i'm about like 80 percent of the swelling has gone down it's been almost four months and yeah. i'm so 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 happy shout out dr peter Raphael. <laughs> yeah you look great in texas yeah so when Brittany, when did you first get like silicone injected like I how long has that been <laughs> Uh, I started last year. Yeah, we in, started around the same time. Yeah, in February, and I've honestly at this point spent over fourteen thousand in injections on my hips on your and hips butt. and your butt and, and, and thighs. thighs. Yeah. yeah, and how like so that's kind of like a controversial like procedure because Very. it's not necessarily like legal. I know that um you guys go to someone who has done like people like um, Nikita Dragon, Eden the Doll. All the girls are She's going done to all the girls. this like you know I guess She's pretty reputable for sure person. So I knew if I was gonna do it, it was her or nobody. Yeah. So um talk a little bit about like so it's sil liquid silicone that they're just injecting into like yeah, the fat or the muscle. Yeah, medical silicone. She gets the top product that you can get, um, um. and it's put in through. Um, she only will add a very small amount at a time because the yeah. point is add it very gradually to allow the scar tissue to build around it so it stays like lumpy or anything so either. it doesn't get lumpy and mm. everything um she's been injecting for 15 years too yeah a very yeah. long time yeah and she's had it in her for 20 years and how'd you get connected with her I got it from her. I got it from another doll. Yeah. It's very much like um, it's referral based. Referral based. Yeah, she I'm doesn't sure. just do anybody, and she's very good because she she's not just she like money hungry. Yeah, and yeah like she'll she tell wanna... you like, babe, no. Well, she's told she, me no before. She's told me no, and then I was like, okay, and then I added an extra thousand. <laughs> yeah. How much I was gonna pay? And she's like, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like, what what's been your experience with it so far? Like, do you love it? Like, I love it. Um, and I wouldn't. I would never recommend it. Um. You know, I gave it to her and I, that's it. I'm like, I wouldn't give it to anybody else. Have you had a good experience with that? I have. Um, I feel like for us, because we aren't, we're very thin people. We're on the more lean side. Mm -hmm. It's, we couldn't, we're not candidates for BBLs. No. Mm -hmm. So silicone, at least for me, was my only option. Me too. Having like that hourglass shape. Yeah, so is it just to get like a bigger ass or is it also to, like to help your transition like just I would say and, both like both, I, yeah. you know every girl when she starts her transition has a picture of who she wants to be in her head and for me it was always like if I'm doing this like I'm Bombshell. I want to like yeah. I wanted to, I love the like you know bimbo Barbie look mm -hmm. and for me it was always about having that big butt like and so it's not like you know some people think like oh like you you've just gotten addicted to it but it's, you know, I always knew I was going to need, she told me from day one, if you want it to look like this, you're going to need this many rounds. And I'm almost there, but. Um, oh, so you're still going? Are I both of you still going? Tomorrow. <laughs> you were going tomorrow to get yeah. more? Oh my God. Um, but at this point, I'm. it's more like um, adding smaller amounts to perfect rather than kind of just. Yeah, you've already made like a lot of progress. Yeah, yeah, definitely. From We're in black, so you can't really see, but <laughs> both of us were kind of like tits on a stick before. And, you know. I'm not gonna recommend it. I'm not gonna say I'm a candidate for it, but for me, it it's changed my life and it's changed the way I see myself. And mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets. Are there any like long term like that you know of like things that could happen? Yeah, I think it comes um, down to who you go to and the product they're injecting as well. I think a lot plays in, but like what could happen? Well, if okay, if you don't massage it properly, it can get hard. Like necrosis, like where it starts to die or anything. That or? is like okay. A lot of girls call it staining, but I guess staining is necrosis, which is um. So it'll look like you have a bruise, pretty much. Yeah, mm. it's um, it's not necessarily going to be hardcore necrosis, rotting at your skin, but more just like you know, there's different types. Can it go it can, away? Um, it, to with get it away, you have to get it. Oh, it the can. necrosis. Yeah. Um. We were told that like to keep it good, we should do like a the bariatric air chamber once a month. And I would what I think that? I'll start. It's 
they basically shoot um, oxygen into your body uh-huh. because necrosis, it's like air isn't like getting in there mm-hmm. and that's why it's turning colors. Okay. So or like you, the blood's not flowing necessarily. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Okay. So like oxygen is probably not getting to that fat or that muscle. Mm-hmm. And then like, because of the blockage, because of the silicone, it kind of like stops it. And yeah, that's what definitely. Mm-hmm. And then have you, have you had any bad experiences so far with your, no, silicone? I haven't at all. No, ours is pretty fresh though. So I yeah, want to say it's going to be like that for everyone. Yeah. Like in five, like, I mean, who really knows what could happen in like 10 years. For and, me, like, you know, the second something goes wrong, I'm calling a doctor and I'll pay the twenty thousand. Yeah, I, to get it like removed, it I guess. Like, yeah, is that what they, they would can do? do? A removal. It's. it's do they a, just like suck it out like lipo? There's different methods. It depends on. I've heard they can use your lasers. Body. Yeah. Oh, lasers. For sure. to, like, just I guess even break up the silicone yeah. or something. I'm not an expert on taking it out. I'm more of an expert on putting <laughs> yeah, it in. Yeah, but it in. <laughs> like I said, I would never like. I I'm done. Like I wouldn't give it to other girls just because I don't. If something happened to Brittany and I was the one who gave her the plug, I would feel so guilty. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, I know she was going to find it with or without me. <laughs> and A lot of girls gatekeep within the trans yeah, community. Sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Even some of our friends yeah. wouldn't give it. <laughs> one girl in particular, I asked her and she was like, oh, she's not pumping anyone right now. <laughs> I asked Angelica. She's like, oh, here you go, you babe. Because <laughs> oh, wow. I wanted to be your friend. That's how we met, honestly. <laughs> yeah. The, our Through first time ever meeting yeah. was a pumping party in my hotel room. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm so glad like both of you are on the podcast and just in general that you're putting yourselves out there and there's more like trans representation. Um, there's a lot of like trans like influencers nowadays and like yeah. mm-hmm. people like, um, I've been trying to get Lila Gibney to come on, but she won't like reply to my text messages <laughs> but she's over here and she is shares stories about like people like kevin gates and rappers and her dms and things like that um do you believe her without naming names 100 percent. i think we've both had a little bit of you know athletes do you believe lila and... though in particular like do you think lila is full of shit sometimes or mm, no because i mean i've had my share of like pe- celebrities being this in my week DMs. we had somebody email but we were busy email <laughs> Yeah, it's all. So, they, how do they reach out to you? Because I would assume Instagram DMs a lot of time or business email. Like they, for me, yeah. I've had. So I don't think that the celebrities are running their um, like social media, like their yeah, main social media. I get that. It's a lot of being recruited by whoever's running it. Yeah. So it's not really direct, but I've had. NDA sent to me. Yeah, that I didn't sign, so don't sue me. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it's that like like right away an NDA or like kind of while you're starting to have a conversation, they send one over. Um, it's kind of initial proposition. Like mm-hmm. this person wants to see you for this twenty k, uh-huh. and here's your NDA. Yeah. So, have you ever met with anyone who's like verified rapper, celebrity type, or have you just been like for me scouted by them? I am in a like serious relationship with well. my boyfriend. So, mm-hmm. I, although I do porn, I am very loyal to him, and Same. I don't I don't escort anymore. I did as a teenager when I was like underage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I declined it, and mm. well. I've that's had, proves like, my love, um, I think. Some, yeah. I'm sweet. in Canada, so um I've had some big Canadian people names. like reach out. Have you like actually hung out with them or um <laughs> Well you don't have to say their name, but yeah, you like what'd yeah. you do? Did you just like hook up or did you like go on a date or like Um it's not a date in public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like a little like we'll hangout. say it was hanging out. Away from like the celebrity, like those people like I mean, do you think a lot of like those guys who like reach out, they're kinda like I don't know the correct word but they're like DL. chasing out like fetishes Down-low. like yeah, yeah dl da- like chasers yeah they're them. chasers yeah yeah <laughs> every we time would i say tranny like, chaser but i don't know if we well i think about like chase icon here. she calls her fans like yeah chaser. Chaser is so <laughs> yeah, cute we love chase cute. icon here so yeah there's a lot of like chasers out there do you find that difficult i mean Brittany said you're in a relationship but do you find it difficult to like find love because yeah. you are online fetishized dating and- immediately like i always tell the girls like you're looking in the wrong place because if they don't know at first and they find out then there's either they're not going to want anything to do with you or they switch up real fast and instead of wanting to go on dates, they're like, too. oh, just, oh, if you go and don't tell them, yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, guys on Tinder, for instance, like mm-hmm. let's say, you know, he's hitting me up and I didn't have it in my bio. Um, This is back when I used Tinder. And then I mention it. I always tell before hanging out because I'm, 
I think it's the respectful thing to do yeah. for one. I don't hate on girls and a who don't, thing, but yeah. a safety thing is really what it comes down to. But yeah. then they find out, or this has even happened at parties. They're like, oh, I want to take you on a date. And then they find out and they're like, oh, well, I wouldn't date you, but we can fuck. I want to try something new. Yeah. Lots and of guys just want to fuck, not yeah. date. Would you, uh, you're both in relationships. Yeah. Would you say that your partner is like, you're, they're not a chaser, right? You no, don't. he had never even seen a trans girl in person before. He saw him, never watched trans um, really? videos or anything he I we met in line at a nightclub and I didn't want to wait in line to get in so I went up and I said I'll give you 20 bucks if I can come in with you <laughs> yeah and my friends and um he was like oh I'm not gonna take your money and then so we, we ended up just meeting and then it was funny that night like um a couple of his friends pulled him aside it happened I think three or four times one of them would pull him aside and be like <laughs> she's trans man like what are you doing and he was just like I don't care he was like, like I don't care what does that have to do with you and yeah. again when he went to work the next day um, he works a very macho yeah. straight job and um, his like bosses were like so like we heard you had an interesting weekend and he was like what do you mean like he's so about it like he Doesn't immediately care. called his parents and was like oh I tried this and um, he's been open with them from the start and everybody and that was really the first time I had somebody who was willing to do that for me and not that that would seem like the bare minimum for a normal like a cisgender girl but for a trans mm -hmm. girl that is showing like huge strength and like huge potential um, yeah it's kind of like um you shouldn't like date somebody specifically because of that but a lot of my trans friends are hopeless to find someone yeah they and... shouldn't be because there's gonna be somebody there it's just you can't it has to kind of happen naturally i think yeah and in your relationship like you feel i guess like I mean, you must feel like uh, fulfilled because you're not even like trying to pursue like yeah, you know, for the sure. rapper guys or anything like I that. I know. Um, <laughs> he, he knows he has a good. <laughs> Definitely. But they know. I have a good really too because like uh, at least for my dating life prior to him, like I was always kind of a secret. Um, my boyfriend now, like he is, he's pretty well known. Like he's produced for like mainstream shit mm -hmm. he owns like seven businesses um he is and you're pretty, not a secret to him i'm not people at his own work have found out about me and i mean they see me on his speedboat they see me on his motorcycle on vacation with him they're <laughs> yeah, like um That's what's hot. going on babe yeah. and he was like yeah so what like what what's the problem here yeah and so, how long have you been together i've been with him for almost two years okay so really like throughout your entire porn career and he's always been supportive. He has, um, he loves the porn girls. <laughs> he, I mean, it's not like my business to share, but he's even told me like, unless you're like on a pole or fucking on camera, then he doesn't really fuck yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's great though. That's like- He's exactly. so supportive. He's my biggest cheerleader yeah. and like, We've shot at his house before. We have. That was the first. <laughs> I got insanely sunburned. And so you've met him too, yeah. I haven't met him. He wasn't home, but oh, okay. um, I would love to. We when we're together, <laughs> we've we're about it. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. One we'll do day. a threesome. So, <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about like um, I guess sugar daddying and you know. I was gonna say seeking arrangements. It's not even a thing anymore. Oh, but um, like, I, I, I yeah. got stories. On have that you one. do you have you like ever had like a sugar daddy or someone give you like a large gift or just money or? throw things at you because I guess of who you are or the time you spend they together. For yeah. me, I was like escorting as a teenager because like I said, In my California, mom, right? You're from California. Yeah, Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, my mom was a drug addict and like I came from really, really poverty. Yeah. So like I had to have money for like clothes and food and like shit that they were like lagging on. Yeah. And and so I would go on. Was it kind of like on, traumatic? Um, yeah, it was. It was survival mode for sure. I was mm -hmm. like also a drug addict at the time. Like I couldn't do it sober. What type? Like opioids? Or I like would do meth. Meth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just but, come a long way. No, I am. It's so like impressive. And I, that's why I definitely want to have you on. Because like hearing your story and like. Thank you're you. You're so strong and then also secure with who you are. So and going through that, I mean, like, so you're a teen and I guess like. I would you know, meet guys. To support yourself. Yeah, yeah. I was. A, would you meet them on like Grindr or like Backpage or like? Well, like you said, seeking arrangement. Uh huh. Yeah. So I would find them on there. We, I would, they'd pay me for. Oh my god! I look back and it was, it was like such little money too. But yeah. I was like uh. underage, and a lot of them knew it. They would at sometimes pick me up from like school and stuff. Oh wow! Yeah, they were like total creeps. Um, but do you like look back at that sometimes as now an adult and you're like, that's like a pervert, like that guy was like a pervert, or like yeah. a sicko. 
Um, I wish I still had their numbers so I could fucking like, <laughs> like dog some right now. Did you now. ever have anyone who like like pushed it too far or made you uncomfortable or like any moments where you're like, oh my god, like that was you know like a life or death like. Ooh, um, probably when it came to the drugs part, yeah, because a lot of them- They like it. They would do it with me, oh. or they would give it to me, too, at times, and um, it kind of got scary. I mean- like, You never, like, overdosed or anything like that, did you? No. no. Um, I feel like meth is kind of a harder thing to overdose, like, but um, I don't know. I feel like the guys that are- trying to fuck like underage girls are like the scum of the earth sickening exactly yeah, yeah. but especially um, when you're in that position and they know they have the power over you like oh she needs the money like they love that and vulnerable get child total yeah. predators yeah. Yeah. yeah and like especially like not only are you trying to support to get like food and basic needs but you're also trying to transition transition which is save up for challenge. a boot job yeah. like it's transitioning is one of the most expensive things I, I could have bought a house Mm -hmm. where I'm from like definitely like a down payment on a house and you know the mortgage payments yeah for after that like for it, like the whole cost of transitioning yeah I'd say I've spent at least a hundred thousand yeah definitely it's it's expensive so the things we do to get there <laughs> um you know I think now we're both at a point where we have the utmost respect for ourselves and like you know we're we don't need that but like I was saying, like that's what the girls, especially back then, mm -hmm. OnlyFans has always been good for me. Like I started doing it. Um, I actually got fired for doing it. And then oh. it kind of- Like the hairstylist job, right? Yeah, I got fired from a salon and I'm from a small town in um, Canada. And you know, I was started my transition. They already weren't a fan of that. Oh, wow. They treated me so differently. Like I would be wearing the same thing as the girl next to me, like the same amount of clothes. And they would write me up for dress code. And really? she has under boob and she's fine. You know, like <laughs> I was totally held to a different standard. And you know, at the first couple months, you don't look, I didn't look how I do now. Like I was just getting it and like, you know, a good workplace would kind of be, um, allow you to have that time. And that's not what I got at all. And, you know, then I started doing OnlyFans. They found out, got fired. So it kind of threw me into that. But thankfully now I make more than my bosses did. So yeah. it worked out. It, have you ever had any like really great sugar daddy experiences? Like where they've given yes. you like a lot of money or a present? Yeah. Like what, what have? So for me, um, I, my first, well, I've never paid for a boob job. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like, especially my first one, that was like such a major thing for me. Yeah. That was all I fucking wanted at yeah. the time. Um, but so a man like paid for that, put the pay like the payment yeah, for it. He he was actually Canadian, um, <laughs> but she yeah, I went to the console. They had him on the phone, and he gave him the car the card info. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. <laughs> but he was also like abusive. I feel like guys that do. I mean, my current boyfriend got my boobs too, but, um, he, and I wouldn't call him like a sugar daddy. I, I call him daddy, but um, <laughs> he, I don't know, like a lot of guys that do things like that for you act like they own you out. Yeah, it's like control, right? I've never, like, I'm so bad at key. Like I've tried to do sugar daddies before, like, and if it was a real relationship, like Brittany has, I could do it, but, um, they're, they're all like raging alcoholics and crazy. Like I would, I've always been the type where it's like, okay, like it needs to be strictly transactional or like hit me up on my OnlyFans, buy my content. Like yeah. nowadays, like I love that content completely is able Can to sell, yeah. sell like But you don't well. have to like sugar daddy ask like those type of things because you are yeah, doing enough in the, definitely. you know, in the industry. Yeah, I'm happy. I don't want to have to do anything I don't want to do. Yeah. I don't think I ever could, especially since I had a drug problem, like it would just trigger all those like feelings mm -hmm. again and having to depend on someone like in... Yeah, I would never be codependent. Like I have my own money. Even though my boyfriend now like he'll take me to like Barbados, Costa Rica, he'll maybe get me a boob job. Like, like yeah. he's never That's just a good boyfriend giving... right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. for yeah. real. Like <laughs> he's never giving me money. I don't depend on him. Like I make my own shit. Like I pay my own bills. Like, yeah, I love that. So big girl. Like, let's talk a little bit about your, like, before we wrap up, like, your next moves. And so, yeah. obviously, you're continuing with studio porn, building your name as, you know, a big porn star out here. Um, I feel like, Brittany, you're, like, pretty much going to be, like, the biggest. Like, Thank <laughs> soon you. Soon, anyways. I love you. If you're not already. <laughs> so, like, I, I know that you've dabbled in music as well. Like, what is your plan for that? Or, like, what do you kind of see yourself doing the next few years? 
for me, I would love to even maybe put out like an album or something. Mm -hmm. um, music is really fun. I do music mostly for myself though, or like music that I would think other girls like us would listen yeah. to. Yeah, it's T girl like, music. T girl like, music. Yeah. Like, yeah, we love that. So how many songs do you have out now? Right now I have three. I have one that I featured with Gracie Jane. Shout out Gracie. Rob. You've like Gracie. performed that one too, right? I've performed it quite a bit. I've done like three live performances. One oh. of them was at the T Awards. We got to open for that. Cute. And was it fun? Did you like it? Like performing it, on stage and stuff? It's the best. I'm like such an attention whore. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you do like a little dancing and stuff like right up there? Yeah, we um, had some choreography oh. planned, but um, it's very different. I prefer I prefer performing at a club where people are like right at the stage, yeah. like dancing. You know, maybe they got some yeah, drinks the energy in them. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at an award show when people are like sitting at tables, it's like a little different vibe. Yeah, the energy's lower for sure. Still fun though, regardless. I love it. Yeah. I'm um, trying to get music with yeah, her. Yeah, we actually have, we're writing music right now to make mm -hmm. it like an EP together. Oh, so really? it'll be my first time doing music, but I feel like it's been a long time coming. I've always loved to perform. Like I uh -huh. said, I was a drag queen before I transitioned and I love attention and being on stage. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like we have a lot of fun ideas that we want to do and we love doing things together. It's like, it's really fun. We love, like, I'm very inspired by, like, Chase Icon. Yeah. yeah like she's in right now, too. Oh, my God. I was God. just looking at her location. We she's, like, not that far. <laughs> I know, right? She's such a sweetheart. Like, I would so love to, to hire her as a producer. She's so talented. Like, yeah. Yeah. She's great. I, I would have her on, but mm -hmm. she's such a busy girl. She's a busy girl. They're at the airport right now. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um, well, that's awesome. So, like, music's kind of, like, a side thing. Um and obviously porn's the main. Is there anything else? I know you've been doing like a lot of press and stuff lately too. So I just kind of like putting yourself out there. Yeah. I love like, I don't know. I love doing podcasts. I, There's I a camera. We'll share, there. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Sharing my story, especially like being trans and like the drug addiction and like, I do feel like it does help so many people, just me speaking about it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I know there's tons of people that are going through it, you know, so. Yeah. Um, that's I'm, awesome. So yeah. music and I feel like also like you're doing more than just porn. You're kind of like an influencer, like, you know, headed towards the influencer route. And like, I'm especially with music and yeah. stuff. I think that's great though. I think that's, it's like smart it's to kind leverage. It's goal to branch out, you know, like, yeah. and be known for more than one thing. It's like, you know, you want to be able to appeal to the men, but you want to appeal to the other girls too. And yeah, um, build a brand yeah, and represent definitely. like the trans girls and for like, sure. absolutely. yeah, I think, I mean, if there weren't people like you out there, then there wouldn't be like inspiration for others. And it's crazy seeing the girls like, I remember messaging girls and telling them I wanted to look and be like them. And now, now we get those them, all the time. And they're like, you're yeah. sunny. That's you, up, like meeting like, Danny Banks. She was my idol. She's like, so hot. I, we just went to her birthday party and you know, um, I had a couple drinks with her and I was like saying like, girl, like you don't even know when I was like 20, I was following you and I wanted to look like you and now I'm here. So yeah, shout I've, out to her. That was amazing. She's right. everything. She's really pretty. I've followed her since before I even did YouTube. Yeah, like, she's gorgeous. She's, she's like, like, to me, the most beautiful woman in the world. And I love seeing you both with her too. I feel Thanks. like you belong. Oh, thank you. Well, we definitely try to be like an inspiration to the next gen. Definitely. Yeah. Let the younger and girls you're so young too. Like at 23, did. like you have thank so you. much more time. Like I can't imagine in 10 years, like what you're going to be doing. Thank you. So exciting. Well, we'll be back for another episode. I know. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> like on a real television yeah, show. So, oh my gosh. This um, is even better because it's you, Slana. We love you forever. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. So um, all their socials will be linked below. Go check out their OnlyFans and their Instagrams and go and follow. Thank you both so much, Brittany and Angelica, for coming on to the podcast. Thank, Thank you, Sloan. Sloan. We Thanks. love you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you guys in next week's episode. And bye, guys. <laughs>